हरियो हरियो हेलो माय फ्रेंड्स रिसेंटली इन अ सत्संग वी यूज्ड एन एक्सप्रेशन इट इज वेरी पॉपुलर बी इन द फ्लो i hear it's being used everywhere in the modern spirituality be in the flow what does it mean to be in the flow it's the same as being present but then it seems many times people understand to be in the present is simply to learn not to worry about the future which of course is already a great thing those who are capable of doing so of not doing so of not worrying they have certainly an advantage because so much energy can be wasted like this to be in the present to be in the flow means that we are really in touch consciously with life with consciousness with love with the creativity of existence <clears throat> if you are capable to bring the attention back to consciously join the flow of life immediately the whole atmosphere the whole experience even the physical experience changes and maybe from that came the expression because it feels like it's just flowing <laughs> life flows it never stands still manifestation always moves that silent part is prior to manifestation that which doesn't move that doesn't change is prior to manifestation within manifestation everything is changing everything is moving but if we are in the flow if we are really in the timelessness of the present then we can be aware of both aspects that which doesn't change the silence against the background of which we are experiencing everything so when i hear that people want to teach to be in the flow people talking about being in the flow for me anything less than that is not being in the flow we don't have to join a popular current in order to be in the flow we don't have to just figure out what they should or should not do but being really in that flow being really conscious of the current of life of consciousness of love of energy means that we really get rooted with our attention in that in that base in that pure consciousness pure love pure energy if the attention is rooted there there comes also that what shall i say <laughs> that certainty behind all this prior to that is that which is rock solid <laughs> which doesn't move which doesn't change 
expressing itself as the changeless consciousness, changeless love, changeless energy. But prior to that, there is something that is rock solid. And to be in the flow is to be capable to come back and bring your attention back to that ground, the pure consciousness, pure love, pure energy. And then everything that is happening is really felt even, like it's just flowing out of there. Spontaneously, creatively. <clears throat> we can play the game amongst people, have our appointments, <laughs> do our duties, play whatever game we have to play, knowing, okay, this is the role that we are playing, but actually it's just an expression of that which is prior. We can be aware of the movement, we can be aware of the expression and simultaneously be aware that there is that pure essence of that at the base of it. Then we can say we are in the flow. And so basically I'm talking about nothing else. Simply I haven't used that expression. We have used it recently and I hear it all the time. That's why I picked it up. But it's not something that I'm going to use now all the time. <laughs> Learn to just be. Be conscious. Be consciously conscious. Consciously alive. And relax. The more we are reminding ourselves to do so, the more we become aware, it's always there, even if we are totally unaware of it. It's never absent. It's the base out of which the whole creation is sprouting. If we make that our home, then we can playfully go about the creation. We can playfully go about our external life stories knowing sometimes it's happy, sometimes it's not so happy, sometimes it's pleasant, sometimes it's not pleasant, but that beauty, that sense of fulfillment, that sense of being complete is prior to that and cannot really be affected by no matter what is happening. Now Mariano has written, has asked me, he's trying to be conscious, trying to connect with consciousness when he is busy, when he is doing his daily thing, but it seems to be so difficult because the tendencies pull us away all the time. That's about it. That's what everybody is struggling with. It should be natural. We should simply be rooted in that. That is our natural state. But then we have learned to be unnatural and all the conditioning and all the education and all the experiences have enforce that habit of always feeling separate, of always losing that ground. And so it seems to be so difficult to come back to that, out of habit, out of conditioning. But we can, if we remember, every time we remember, we can consciously connect even for a moment. Now, Mariano, you say it's difficult. And maybe you try to figure out means with your mind. <laughs> Don't think too much about it. And I recommend you use a, that very simple tool that is there all the time 
simply redirect the attention to the breath. Breathe consciously. Whenever you remember, just breathe consciously and relax and you are right here. You are in touch with consciousness. It's so simple because we're breathing anyhow all the time and the breath is now in that it, the story is like flowing in front of the timelessness of the now and at that moment where it's passing by, it's experienced as the present in the story. But the present is never staying, for it's always immediately the past. But that sense of presence, that being in the present, is always there. And this is a very easy means to bring the attention back to that, to connect with that. So, Mariano, don't try too much mental acrobatics. <laughs> Just breathe consciously and relax. Whenever you remember, breathe consciously and relax and, relax and you are right here. And you are right in conscious touch with light. And even if it stays for a little moment only, that moment is precious. And if you do it again, when you remember, and you become aware, oh, I completely drifted off again with my attention. And just you do it again. And every time you consciously do so, you're getting stronger in it. The old habits may be very strong. And so it may take some time that they are not more pulling the attention away all the time. But if you consequently do so, that simple thing. Breathe consciously and relax. Then that collects its own momentum, its own power, and finally it's becoming stronger than the old habits and the patterns and the conditionings and all the stuff that we are carrying in our psyche. And it becomes easy to detach from that and let it go as it comes up. Things may still come up for quite a while. Stuff out of the subconscious come up and then you can decide because you are aware. You can get, decide whether you are picking it up, whether you are thinking about something, but then even that you do consciously and then you let it go and it's not just turning round and round and round. So, Mariano, breathe and relax, breathe and relax. <laughs> and then he said he's missing Arunachal and hopes he can come back here again one day. Well, Mariano, hopefully you can do so, but until then, be aware that that which has fascinated you here at Arunachala's feet is also with you there in Argentina. <clears throat> you're never apart from that and if you do what I just said if you learn to spend your day breathing consciously you consciously come in tech, contact with what you appreciated here at Arunachala and then the external story will arrange itself according to what has to be and has not to be. Okay, I drop the subject. And I'm asking you, my friends, is there anyone here who would like to say something? You're welcome to do so. <clears throat> Hello, Werner. Hello, Dial. Uh, in this context that you were speaking 
to be in the flow, to be here now, to be in the present. I want to continue to talk about different objects of meditation. Yeah. I see there's many objects of meditation people using, for example, uh, uh, respiration, breathing, or focusing on the, some spot of the body. And you advise find the spot which is suitable and just focus on this spot. And uh, understand this is for some people, this spot better uh, for other, another people, another spot is better. Some people focus on the old, old body, like the Pasana scanning the old bodies. So uh, can we say that any spot in the body can be used for meditation? For example, I focus on my finger and just keep my attention there. It's enough to be in the meditation present. Sure, it can help as a concentration exercise which helps you to be in the present. Any sincere concentration helps you to be in the present. Now, I said uh, basically it can be any spot in the body. Still, I would recommend that you choose one spot which is already an energetic center. Instead, mm -hmm. instead of, but if you feel like as an exercise to do so, to focus on the finger, then you can focus on the finger. But as a general main center for your experience, it's helpful if you choose one who is already a place that is already having a special energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. But on Vipassana, <clears throat> they ask not to focus on energy centers mm -hmm. because they want we feel different spots of the body. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just different approach. Yeah, I understand. For example, before we passed, I was focusing on the third eye here, and I find it uh, very mu much easier to focus on this spot than to another spots. For mm -hmm. example, under the nose, mm -hmm. more difficult for me to focus. But um, somehow, slowly, we can develop other plates also to focus. <clears throat> Is it correct? Sure. You can uh, develop that capacity to focus anywhere. And mm -hmm. the two are not as contradictory as it sounds. As it sounds, you can have your main center where you feel most comfortable to focus, and then you can focus on other spot. But it's then in a way that you focus from your main center, that you are still aware of your center where you are usually centering, and then you will become aware of other places. After all, Vipassana is doing nothing else. When they focus on this spot, and then still they're scanning the whole body, but uh, keep that just as a center, as a main focus. Actually, no, Werner, uh, we focus uh, a few days on this spot, and then we start scanning all the body and forget about this spot. So, but it doesn't matter. I see, it doesn't, <laughs> like, it doesn't go simultaneously. <laughs> I see. Yes, I see. we can try to do small things, but they are not advised. They said you better just focus on different spots and feel whatever is there. So, okay, I understand your uh -huh. point. But I okay. want to continue this, this talk about uh, another objects. For example, uh, some Buddhists using uh, different uh, circle with different colors, like mandala. They mm. focus on yellow circle, for example, for many days, then they close the eyes and imagine this circle inside and continue until they go into very deep journals. Mm. And um, they use only certain colors. They advise to use certain col colors. I don't remember, not every color they advise, just some colors, they said it's better uh, focus on these colors. And also, some people focus on the images of the god. For example, image of Krishna and other gods uh, can be used for meditation. Tibetan using very complicated uh, images of the gods. Uh, so can you speak about these images? Any image can do. For example, I can focus on 
Russian flag, for example, <laughs> as a focus of meditation, or or what? <laughs> What's the difference? Yeah, theoretically, you can focus on any image. <clears throat> If you, at the same time, focus then on being present. And that focus just helps you to come into that sense of presence. Now, practically, it's still more advisable for, and this is like the, here you mentioned that what the, they call in Hinduism, Rupa Dhyanam, the form on meditation, then they choose a deity and they have already, these are for devotees who have already a special affinity with that form. And then it's then not simply a concentration exercise, but at the same time, the devotee who focus on the form of its Ishta Devata, the, the, the beloved deity, then immediately also there starts that heart opening and that uh, becoming aware of that divine presence. And if you are focusing on the Russian flag, uh, you are not feeling that much of a divine <laughs> presence there. <laughs> But it reminds mm. you of all the poly political troubles and unrest. And then you have to work your way through that in order to come to simply being present. For that, it's more advisable that you, if you want to do form meditation, that you choose a form that you automatically also brings you in tune with the essence. Mm -hmm. You could okay. also okay, just uh, look at the chair and focus on a chair. <laughs> it's more mm -hmm. neutral, but uh, it's then there as, an, as a concentration exercise is okay. But it won't have that same effect like when a devotee imagines the image of Krishna and starts to see the image of Krishna, then there is much more of a current that is being established than simply having that capacity of focusing on a form. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand, yes. But chairs are quite often used when the guru passed away. Uh, people focus on the chair where guru used to sit before. So no. it can be devotional object, I, okay. I guess. That's it. That's is, uh, something different. And uh, if yes, if yes. the devotee, if the disciple associates that particular chair with the guru and the guru with the self, with the divine, then that uh, that focus on that chair is different than uh, just any chair in the waiting room. <laughs> So, yes, one doesn't need to do those things. Uh, you call them all these meditations, and I'm rather calling them all these techniques. <laughs> all these techniques that help you to come to meditation, to bring your attention back to that The essence of all those techniques is exactly that, that somehow or other we become aware of that sense of presence, whether we look at it as God's presence or our own self or totally abstract, simply presence, it doesn't matter. But the, the different techniques are helpful and different minds are responding to different techniques. But that all those so-called meditations, they are techniques that lead to meditation. And meditation, in this context, I mean that capacity to be in tune, to consciously be in touch with the essence. Okay, I see that... Dial has disappeared. Dial, are you back? Uh, you have to unmute again. Uh, I can't hear you. You have to unmute. Uh, turn the microphone. Ah, yeah. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, I lost you for uh, one minute, but okay, I will uh, listen it in the recording. Yeah. It doesn't matter. 
And I want to continue this question about mantras. Uh, so different mantras is using. And if I, for example, using just any sound like Om or Coca-Cola, it mm -hmm. will lead me in the same way. <laughs> or how does it work this any sound? Right. It's again like the last question. Uh, basically, you could also mm -hmm. simply focus on the word Coca-Cola. <laughs> and if you concentrate and focus totally, and that helps you to detach from all the other thoughts, then it fulfills its purpose. But then there are mantras, they do more than that. Like uh, mm -hmm. an image of Krishna for the devotee is invoking more than just an image. And so mantras that have been used since time immemorial, they have in themselves already a certain power. And for that, it's more mm -hmm. advisable to focus on a mantra like this than on Coca-Cola. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I understand, Werner. And it um, brings me to the, the point to be in <clears throat> meditation state in the normal life. We can use anything. Uh, for example, we can focus on uh, here and now on something in this situation, we can use it f to, to just be focused, just, just be concentrated, not right. to dream in a way. Yes, it's, uh, right. it's okay. Definitely. Mm -hmm. To be aware of anything in the present manifestation, in the present experience, is bringing your attention to the present. And then as a second step, you can just relax. And then, actually, you drift in a in that awareness that you can also just observe the whole thing, that you are not an object in the story, but that basically that the, there is that story, that there is that movie going on, and you there is something that is simply watching. But anything can happen. You hear the wind blowing through the trees, and that then... You, you just become aware of hearing and you are right here and you relax. You see something and you focus on that. It can be a nice a nice thing like a butterfly or it can be not so a nice thing like a car on the street that makes a lot of noise. <laughs> you focus there, but then if you're focusing in the present and relax, then your attention drifts back and you become aware there is something not involved and in observing. So anything that happens along in your day-to-day -day life can be used, can help you to bring, if you use it properly. Thank you, Werner. Very helpful. Hari Om. Hari Om. Hari Om. <laughs> Is anybody else there who would like to say something? Hi, Verna. Hello, Ravi. <laughs> um, just continuing on from the topic with Dial, um, I have been doing Amma's meditation for a while. It's the I am meditation, which is stretches and yeah. There's a, a whole lot of different things that you do in the meditation. It changes every 10 seconds. Yeah. It's very active and dynamic. Um, and I love it, but there are a couple of things where I, I get a bit stuck. So I wanted to ask you a question around mm. that. Mm. Um, so one of the questions, one of the things is, is that you, um, you put your attention on the chakras and, um, and you see them, as a golden light mm -hmm. and I can't, I find it really, there's two things going on. One is I find it really difficult to visualize a golden light while I'm putting my attention on the chakras. Mm -hmm. And so um, what I've actually started to do is just not visualize the light, but just put my attention there. And, but then my mind goes, well, maybe I'm not, you know, maybe, 
this is not the highest way to do it, but it seems to, it seems to, the other way I keep trying and it doesn't work. Um, but another thing with the other way is when I think of the word gold and I think of gold like, <laughs> from the earth or something, and then yeah. I think, but then it seems easier to visualize gold and yellow, like the colors, just the yellow of a sun. So yeah. my questions are one, is the yellow because there are obviously the word golden was chosen by Amma for a particular reason, but the gold, the yellow rays of a sun, is that good enough? And even if I find that too difficult, is it okay just to drop the visualization and just have the attention on the chakras as opposed to visualizing the color in the chakras? Right. Okay. Let's start from what you said last. Last, of course. Golden light is often used in spirit as a spiritual metaphor to that purity of the light. And if your heart is responding easier to pure sunlight than golden light, then by all means, then use that. It's perfectly valid. It's not that you that word gold has any special power. It's simply a metaphor that is used very often in spirituality. <laughs> right. And then you say, but you have difficulty to feel the place and at the same time to visualize. But feeling that seems to come rather easy. Then put, by all means, put your emphasis on that, on that feeling, that place, and uh, as you say, you go in that meditation from one place to another and do different things, but then uh, focus mainly on that which comes easy and then eventually the other one may also come in, but you need not disturb your, your being aware energetically of a place by thinking, but I should also visualize. <laughs> I mean, I haven't done that that meditation but this and basically people should not tell but then I picked up a piece here a piece there <laughs> and like all the these meditation techniques that have uh, like like and this one has a quite a quite an active thing going on and you follow basically, when you do that meditation, you follow what you are being taught, but at the same time, each one can have their own flavor. And like in this particular case, you, you find it relatively easy to focus energetically on the chakras, but to visualize them as golden light doesn't come so easily, then focus on that which comes easy. And don't matter, uh, worry so much whether the other also comes or not. Not handicapping your focus on the energy place by thinking I should do the other two. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Thank you for the, that, those word, that advice there. And when you talk about focusing, like you said, I find it easier focusing energetically. I don't actually necessarily know if it's more it's more just my attention is there. I'm not necessarily tuning into anything else apart from that. But that in itself is the beginning of focusing on it energetically. Is that yes, right? Yes, yes. Right, right. Yeah. Good. And then um, <coughs> the other thing is there's a part in the meditation where, um, like, I'm not going, I've just mentioned a little bit. I know I'm not not intending to talk about the meditation but um where you put your attention on a spot and you just hold hold your attention visually on that spot with your eyes open for a couple of minutes that i find hard to do and i find when i just put my hands together by my heart and and look at that spot it's much easier it's i guess it's just i feel a relaxation and a heart opening and I guess there's less trying. I'm looking at it, but there's less trying because I'm more aware of 
this space within me or my heart. Is that okay to do? <laughs> sure, it's okay to do. Uh, the, basically, it's a yogic, a yogic technique, Trataka, to focus just your vision on a particular point. It can be a flame, it can be a point, it can be anything. And if you can do that easier by folding your hands in front of your heart, then you can very well do so. No problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Berna. You're welcome. Do as Carry it on. comes to you nicely, naturally, and then if it's not always exactly to the word how you have learned it, you need not develop a bad conscience about this and and handicap your meditation because of that. Then do it as it comes to you. That is perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Good. Hurry on. Hurry on. Hurry on. Hurry on. <clears throat> is there anybody else? Who would like to come? You're welcome to come in. As I have said another time, to dial when we talked about different meditations, and I said it today. For me, meditation is just one thing. To be consciously conscious in the present, in that timelessness of the now. To be consciously alive, to focus, to be consciously aware of the energy, of the love, of the consciousness that is. So, all these meditations that exist, that's why I call them all these techniques. They are there to bring us to meditation. And then meditation doesn't need necessarily to be that we sit in a spot and close the eyes. But then meditation becomes more and more our way of existing no matter what we are doing or not doing. Still, it certainly, as I have said many times, it's certainly helpful if we can find every day some time where we are not busy, where we have nothing to do, where we can put the undivided attention on that only. And even if we sit quietly, if somebody likes to use a technique for meditation, then by all means, use that technique. It's good to have that awareness. It's a help. It's a crutch for the mind. It's a help that finally we really meditated. Finally, we really live consciously conscious consciously in touch with life, with energy, with love. And for that, any technique that helps us to come closer to that, any technique that makes it easier to do so, to connect, is perfectly valid. And for that, it's also good to know if we are taught the technique and then if somehow while practicing a bit, a variation of that is developing. But still it works, it helps us to connect, then one needs not have any doubts about it, whether it's okay or not, because whatever helps us to consciously connect is fine. <laughs> I just call it techniques, not meditations. These techniques, they finally lead to meditation.
I'm asking you again. Is there anyone who would like to come and say something? You're welcome. Hello. Hello, yeah. Ritis. Anjali, so, uh, <laughs> so I wanted to follow this uh, the same concentration with uh, uh, on some objects uh, on this technique for today's topic. So for me, if I concentrate on some objects, then uh, or on breathing or something, then they become an obstacle. Uh -huh. And what I found that it uh, should be somehow to should remove that obstacle, drop it or, or something like that. And what helped me to go through them to that background. Is it correct that those objects on what we concentrate in meditation techniques, they should be dropped and this, uh, as a next step or? No. Yes and no. <laughs> you need not uh, at a certain point come to the conclusion now it's time to drop that object it's, it's more it's, not, uh, yeah. it's more that the object may uh, sort of drop away by itself yeah right and that uh, that may happen yes but the <clears throat> it can also be that even if you become aware of the background that the awareness of the breath continues and then it's not an ob uh, obstacle it's just uh, uh, we don't have to fix our attention then uh, only on the form of that object but use that object to help to withdraw from all the other disturbances and then actually if if you are in that concentration and you relax and you are not tense on holding just an image or they're holding the, the attention on the breath, but you just relax, then automatically your attention goes beyond that object. Mm -hmm. And then it may drop away, or still, you may be aware of the breathing, but you don't have to concentrate on it anymore. But then uh, that object of breathing uh, becomes uh, like not an object. Yes, uh, right. like a, a, a dispersed something in the space, but not an object. Right. It's then just uh, like you are aware of that background and aware of the expression of the background as breath. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Then it's not an obstacle. So basically, there should be like. At least two steps. First, uh, we with concentration on some uh, favorite object, we withdraw from the all uh, other surroundings and objects, and then uh, we wait or trying somehow uh, drop that object or go through or disappear, and then it's it's there. Yeah. Basically, my experience is all we need is to relax. Yeah, yeah, but for me, when you say relax, it's like an action. An yeah. action needs to be done. Yeah. So then it's loading some program how to do this <laughs> relaxation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because different uh, parts in the brain, uh, what I, I'm studying this from uh, this uh, neuro <clears throat> uh, neurosciences, those one uh, part is very strong in, in some people, which uh, is uh, responsible for the place, like yeah. uh, and the actions what we do another is uh, responsible for the names or naming objects and then if uh, action is associated with an object so it becomes a uh, obstacle uh -huh. okay then <laughs> but if you load the program that you have to drop the object then mm -hmm. that's that's again the same thing yes the yes the same yeah Right, then, then you have again a new program yeah. that you have to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and consciously relaxing, even if it's an act, is also changing something energetically that it's easier to just let go. For that, I'm, uh, I'm saying, saying it tirelessly, relax, relax, relax. Focus, concentrate, 
and relax and if you even as a deed as an action do that attempt that but you really relax and then let go then the letting go starts to happen by itself mm -hmm. then it's not more an action yeah right right so okay. then we then we are okay yeah yes <laughs> okay thank you <laughs> you are welcome are you are you are you are you What it is now just touched is a is a point of discussion very much in the modern Advaita. Don't do anything. Because when you do something, then they are again missing it. <laughs> but let's be honest. When we catch the attention, then the attention is somewhere involved in doings, and it is an action to consciously become aware of that it is an action to catch the attention and turn it in the right direction. There, so there is nothing, absolutely nothing wrong in doing something. When we see how much we are doing all the time that we put in the current debt act that helps us to withdraw from all these unnecessary doings that are going on without our being aware of and turn it in the right direction. And then my advice is relax. And relaxing, of course, which this is right, is still a command. It's an action. But the more you relax, the less it becomes a command on an action and things are Seem, when you consciously relax and you start on the physical level and you relax energetically, then relaxation starts to really happen and things start to fall away and you are right here. So doing flows into non-doing. The action flows into no action. But we cannot avoid a certain action and then sometimes people don't want to do any practice, make any effort because of that idea you should not do anything. But then that doing is not wrong. As long as we are doing so many things without being aware of, we don't get around certain actions to really start to realize it. And then another action to learn to withdraw the attention and not feed that unnecessarily thinking and feeling and acting and doing so many things and bring the attention back and it's still a conscious action and there is absolutely nothing wrong. It's it's wrong that people shy away from doing so because they don't want to be a doer. It's still a doing. We don't get around to do at least that much, to become aware how much we are doing anyhow all the time and learn to direct the attention back to that which simply is. And then if we relax in that process, which is in the beginning still an order, a command that we give that manifestation, if we really do so, then that relaxation becomes a non-doing and you just are the two flow together but we cannot avoid the first part as long as the attention has just a tendency to go off all the time and roaming around and turning around subjects then somehow or other something has to be done about it to withdraw it to learn to withdraw it from them We need not be afraid of doing something, but we can be very well aware. What we are looking for is not somehow the reward of doing, 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 and then finally we attain. What we are looking for is already here. It's not something to be gained by action. It's not something that comes as a reward for having practice enough. It's not something that is there at the end of a long journey. 
and we have to struggle and struggle and finally it's there it's here now nothing needs to be done about that nothing can be done about that you are that timelessly spacelessly here now if somebody is rooted in that then all questions disappear about doing or not doing spontaneously there are expressions of that self playfully and the, the both the concepts of being the doer and not the doer disappear <clears throat> but most of the people are not in that state and it's a struggle to be aware what the all is happening in the mind and for that all these practices are very helpful and these practices are doings <laughs> but they help us to become aware how much the tendency is there in the mind to do so many other things because most of the people are not aware how much they are doing all the time then when we become aware of what's going on there, we can also do something about that by withdrawing the attention, redirecting the attention, and then we let go, and then the doing and the not doing come together. <laughs> all right, I stop again talking all by myself and asking you, my friends. Would anybody else say something? Hello. Hello, Andreas. Could you say the central part in, in meditation is the letting go? The central part in meditation is being. And the, on the approach to meditation, we have to learn to let go and let go and let go. <laughs> okay. But the, definitely the letting go is important. That this what creates all that trouble for everybody. That we are carrying so many things in the mind we are carrying it in the psyche. We are carrying long gone things that we are not even aware that we are carrying. And somehow or other that prevents us from just simply being natural. And the process of liberating oneself from that is letting go. And in order to let that be, be at all in a position to let that stuff go, we have to become aware, <laughs> learn to be aware, alert and aware. So, yes, the letting go is the important thing, but uh, we need to be aware in order to at all be recognize that things are there to be dropped, to let go. <laughs> And, and the techniques are just to help to letting go, right? Right. Definitely. So, so it's, <laughs> because, because a lot of times I get like tangled up in a technique and <laughs> and the technique even prevents the letting go in a way. Hmm. Okay. When, if one is really totally fixed on a technique, then for quite a while, uh, the attention may be totally on that level. Still, it helps to withdraw from uh, all the other things. And the old tendencies will come and stand in the way and want to uh, pull the attention away from being focused on that technique. And one can start that process of being aware that is, that is there, that is haunting me, that is a burden I'm carrying and learning to let go. And if at a certain point, if one really sincerely proceeds practicing the technique 
one becomes also aware. Hey, the technique in itself is also a thing that is not necessary, <laughs> that is also something that is artificially produced and can be let and go when it's the time. One can also practice a technique and be very well aware from the beginning, hey, it's just a tool, it's just a help. So because it's easier to have something to focus on than to abstractly withdraw and let go. If we have something to hold on to, then it's easier to let go of other things. And from the beginning that awareness can be there, that technique is just a help. But sometimes people are not aware of that and very strict and fanatic about their technique, that this is their technique, that is the one thing that brings it about. But if their attempt is sincere, if they really want truth, sooner or later they come to the understanding, hey, the technique is not that which matters. That is just a help that has been picked up, but it's not the essence. And then that fixation on the technique will start to drop away all by itself. Yeah, I, a lot of times I get tangled up by by the, the thoughts like, do am, am I doing it in the right way or mm -hmm. <laughs> is it the right result? And so, so that get, itself becomes a hindrance. Right, that is just the old habit of wanting to do the writing, me, the person want to do the writing in order to get something. But then when you will become aware, ah, oh, there I'm going again, then remind yourself, there's not really the one right, perfect thing to do about it, whatever helps you to bring the attention to that living presence is perfectly valid. And so <laughs> there is not really a right, perfect way to do something or not the perfect way to do something. <laughs> if we go about it with sincerity, it brings us home. Yeah, thanks to your help, I remember this more often now. <laughs> Great, good. That's, that's the direction. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Hario. Hario. Hi. Hi, Werner. Hi, Nava. Um, a question about um, my meditation this morning. I was meditating mm -hmm. and I was focusing just on the breath coming in and out of the nose. And at the same time, more than usual, I was able to see things come and go, the thoughts and the noises, and um, and I was struggling less with it. So I kept thinking exactly what we're talking about, let go, let go, let it happen. And usually I can't because if I let go, then I just get lost mm -hmm. in my thoughts, but it didn't happen this morning. Yeah. And so I was sitting, and then at some point uh, I have a timer going off. And the timer went off, and I thought, where have I been? I, I wasn't asleep. I wasn't lost in my thoughts, but I also wasn't aware anymore of what was happening. And I don't know what was going on. Um, does that make any sense? Yes. <laughs> no, okay. It, did, it didn't to me either. I don't know what happened. No, I said yes. Um, oh, it, you it, said yes. Oh, good. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Please. <laughs> you know, the Indian way of saying yes is also uh, shake, <laughs> yeah. shaking the head. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I got, got used to that. <laughs> <clears throat> it makes sense that you come into a space where you are not going to sleep where you are not necessarily thinking a lot and you're getting somewhat in a dream, dream type of condition. And the 
the time can pass very quickly because it's quite pleasant in that space. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's fine if that is happening, nothing wrong, but uh, when you become aware that this is happening more and more, then you can find a way that you don't get stuck there. Somehow we get through that from when you come from the normal day-to-day -day consciousness to your meditation practice, then actually you always go through that space, that the dreamlike space that is neither awake, neither uh, sleep, neither concentrating nor thinking, but uh, just also not really consciously being. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if you become aware that that uh, is approaching, then you can use your meditation that you have used, your technique that you have used to come up to this point, you just continue focusing on the breath, you use the breath. So then even if that comes, you continue focusing on the breath. You don't have to push that state away, that space away, but you continue focusing on the breath and relax. And then it's like we are getting through that and go deeper than that. It's, it's a nice state, but it's, it's not extremely useful. It's nice. Uh, and it helps if some pe if people can come into that, it helps to relax and then face the day easier. In that sense, it's useful. But uh, when, if people are not careful, we can get a bit stuck on that level and very nicely get into meditation and spend a lot of time in meditation and actually uh, drift a bit in that space. So just use your technique that you have used also there when you become aware and when you become aware that you are have been there and you have not more been aware of the breath then bring the attention back to the breath but relax very relaxed and then the breath takes also it gets another flavor it's like then uh, if from that space you are aware of the breath and re relax, it's like the breath really becomes magical in bringing your attention closer back home. <laughs> yeah. it, it was unfamiliar. It's never happened to me before. I see. Yeah. Yeah, but you're right. It was very relaxed and I ha had no idea when it started. So. Mm -hmm. I think it would take a lot of awareness to realize it was happening. And then, as you say, to stop that and go back to the breath. Right. But uh, if it happens, uh, you need not think, oh, something wrong. Okay, fine. Simply don't get stuck there. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. It just means you have to be aware that you're there. Right. And eventually <laughs> you come out and then you just continue. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hurry home. Hurry home. Hurry home. <laughs> it's good to never stop. We can practice and then get into relatively nice states and keep getting into nice states and they may get subtler and subtler and then one may have the tendency to get a bit stuck in there. And so for that it's good to have that basic awareness Whatever is happening, simply don't get stuck. Don't think, oh, this is it. <laughs> That's where I wanted to come. See, and if it's a nice experience, a pleasant experience, great. But just don't get stuck in that, on that level. And we can just come back to whatever we have been using. Like... 
Brahmana sometimes used to advise people who were doing self-inquiry. And they told him, and then I get in a very peaceful state. And he used to advise them, but then once in a while, use the question, who is experiencing the peaceful state? Just never stop. <laughs> we don't have to, like we have discussed before with Ritis, we don't have to hold on and hold on and hold on to a tool that we are using and do it and do it and do it and focus only on that level. But since we are using a tool, it's familiar and it can be used also on subtler levels and ever subtler levels. That even if we are in a nice state, that we need not push it away. We may have all kinds of experiences in meditation. We need not push them away, but never get stuck and think, oh, that's it. That's what I was looking for. Whatever comes is there for some time and goes away again. And we can use the same tool that we have been using, maybe grosser, in a more subtle way, and still use the tool to be helpful, not to settle down anywhere. And like that, you're getting deeper. And actually, the experience of that, the essence remains, but the experience of that keeps on unfolding unfolding. Is there anybody else who would like to come in? You're welcome. <laughs> Hello, Vikas. Hello. Haryom. Haryom. Uh... I would like to ask, uh, what is the correct time of, uh, what is the importance of uh, meditating in the morning or in the night or inside house or in temple, mm -hmm. in a mountain, near the river? Or sometimes I've heard that people also do it in the marketplace, mm -hmm. like train people, uh, gurus do make their students uh, do this meditation in, in the marketplace where there is a lot of noise. So, if you can give me some guidance on that. Yes. <clears throat> it's helpful if we can somehow create a space where we are doing that. Well, when you come to that corner or to that room or whatever that place you are regularly doing your practice, then automatically when you come there, then you are already opening up opening up for the subtler influence of your practice time. But if we cannot have that space, then never mind. We can, in spite of that, meditate. And it's helpful if we have a certain regularity. So if you have in the morning time and you start your day with meditation before you go for work, then the fact that you do it regularly the next morning when you come at the same time, it's also like it's already preparing, it's already opening up. But if so, for some reason, this is not possible to have a regular time uh, and where we can do it, but have to do it in different times, then that is not the reason for not doing it. Then we can do it at any time. All these things, they help, they can be helpful, but they are not compelling. And the more you are rooted in your practice, the more you are strong in your practice, the less important they are. So whether you choose a particular exact time or not, it's, it's helpful. It's also helpful if you meditate in the morning and then go to work, then your work also is easier 
it's easier in your working time to remember to connect than if you get up and straight away go working. But if that is for some reason not possible to meditate before going to work, then it's perfectly valid to meditate after work in the evening. Mm -hmm. We can use all those helps if we can easily install them, if, we, if they are easily possible. But we don't have to hang our attention on that and think this is absolutely necessary and then uh, the external form becomes too important. Mm -hmm. And then when you do your practice, your meditation in your special place at your special time, then the, the work goes on that you try more and more to medit be meditative also when you do your job and also when you are in the marketplace <laughs> without necessarily sitting down and crossing your legs in the marketplace, but that we learn to be more and more in that meditative space, in that meditative state. And all this external help one can use, if they are easily obtainable, then by all means use them. If it's a struggle to get them to have your spot, to have your exact time, to if that becomes then a struggle, then they rather become an obstacle and then it would be better not to care so much about it. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hario. Hario. Is there anybody else? Who would like to say something? <laughs> okay, today we have been talking a lot about meditation. <laughs> so let's just spend some time together. Consciously tuning into the space that we are here together. Consciously tuning into the essence. And just be like this. Without asking questions, without talking. Try to be comfortable where you are. And if you feel like using any tool that you're usually using, self-inquiry, being aware of the breath, focusing on a certain point, you use it. And just be here. Now, alert and relaxed. And there is the sound of the dogs. It comes, it goes. We need not resist. We need not be annoyed. It's just an object of perception. Boom, it goes. Just bring the attention back to your meditation, to being here now. And relax.
alert and reject. When the, when the thoughts come and want to, ca to carry the attention away, we just see them. These are also objects, like the sounds. They come, they go. We need not go along with them. We need not get interested in them. Just bring the attention back home, here now. Alert and relax. Sense perceptions are there, they come and go. I am here now. Thoughts are there, <coughs> they come and go. But I am here now. We can 
gently become more aware of the body, of the surroundings, and still be aware. This peaceful center is never absent. And after that, we go again for all the activities that are there. We can take that awareness with us. The peaceful ground is never absent. Whatever we are doing, whatever is happening, this is always there. And this is a refuge. This is how we can live. A visual well. Are you? Are you? Are you? 